I've just arrived in the city of Newcastle and I'm about to spend 24 hours here with only 50 pounds and that's to pay for my food, my travel around the city and entertainment. So is that enough to see the sights and have a good time or will I run out of money and be stranded here? Let's go explore Newcastle and find out. So Newcastle is a city famous for its football, the Newcastle Ale and the Tyne Bridge and I'm going to be checking all of those out in this video along with staying in a pretty interesting cheap hotel but first I think we need to find out a little bit more about Newcastle so let's go to the Discovery Museum here it is let's go in actually before we do that check out this massive tank outside that's pretty cool it's free to come in here which is great there's an absolutely massive boat in here You've got smaller model boats too. It looks like this section contains the history of Newcastle and how it came to be today. Bit more modern section here. Got a section on the military. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. Look at the size of this model boat. It's massive. The Time Bridge. Hopefully I'll be checking that out later on. There's even a cool model car in here. Giant 3D map of Newcastle. This is a really big model of a battleship here. Pretty cool and interesting place in there. A lot about the history of Newcastle, the surrounding areas, and with the amount of model boats in there, I think these ships and boats played a big part in Newcastle's history. It's time for lunch and I still have all of my budget left. Let's go find somewhere nice. I think this place looks good, Albafuera Cafe. So that's a pretty nice lunch in there. I went for the house special Bifana sandwich. It came with slices of pork, a fried egg, ham, cheese, and sauteed onions. And it was pretty delicious and i got that with a peach iced tea all for nine pounds 40 which means i have 40 pounds and 60 pence left let's go check out the st james's park football stadium so newcastle is a city where the football stadium is right in the middle of the city center which means it's pretty easily accessible and you can just walk up to it and explore it's always impressive seeing football stadiums because they have these massive structures right in the middle of the city I think big stadiums like this can be considered as the modern day amphitheatres. So back in Roman times you would have places like the Colosseum where people would gather and watch their heroes. And in the modern day football stadiums are the same thing. So you can go on tours of the stadium where they show you the stands, the football pitch. But there's something else I want to do first. Just walking down Grey Street, a street that's famous for the old architecture for its buildings. The Tyne Bridge. Let's go see if we can go across it and I'm crossing it. Built in the 1920s, it's probably the most iconic structure in Newcastle. And if you look at it in isolation, you might even mistake it for the Sydney Harbour Bridge in Sydney. So that was pretty cool to cross the bridge there, although it was loud and windy, so I had to shout. Just walking under the bridge now. So I think the area that I've now reached is called the Quayside. So we're just on the banks of the River Tyne. You can see the other side that I came from. So there's actually a couple of reasons why I wanted to come across here. Firstly, the big glass building over there called Sage, which is pretty cool. You've got the Millennium Bridge just behind me there, which I think I'm going to have to cross as well. And also we've got the Baltic Art Gallery, which I want to go to now. Let's head in. So it's free to come in here and I was recommended to start on the fifth floor, which I'm at now. It's a pretty good viewing gallery on the fifth floor. You can see the major landmarks like the Time Bridge and the Millennium Bridge. Right, let's work our way down. There's a lot of printed patterns on canvas in this one. This is a pretty strange room. So I'm now on the third floor. Let's check out this exhibition. I think this one seems to be about nature. Some vertical umbrellas. And I've now made it to the second. There's a really big sculpture in the middle of that room. There's a load of hanging fabric in this one. Is this part of the exhibition or is it just a kids playroom? It's pretty hard to tell. So a load of strange structures in this one and I'm back on the ground floor. So that's the exhibition completed. And if you've not seen contemporary art, 
it's a little unusual right i think it's about time i check into my hotel but it started raining and i want to go across the millennium bridge i think i found the solution an umbrella and i've arrived sleepers in newcastle okay so i've checked in i've got my room key let's go find the room i'm in number 202 here it is So this is my room for the night. Let me give you a room tour and I'll tell you how much I paid. Right, so we have a nice double bed with a red cushion. We've got some lamps on either side. You've got a bedside table on this side with your tea and coffee making facilities. And there's even, I noticed, a little safe under the bed so you can lock your things up. On this side, we've got another lamp and we've got a nice big TV as well. Got a telephone, got some spare towels, some coat hangers. So there's no actual wardrobe in this room. There's like an open plan bit here where you can put your things. Got a mirror on this side. And then the bathroom is here. And it's a pretty small one. So we've got the sink, we've got some towels, got the toilet, got a mirror there, mirror here and a little shower and it's a kind of small wet room in here looks pretty good let's check out the view so what is the view like in here the view is of i'm not really sure what that is but at least there's a window so i think it looks pretty good in here I think that's partly due to the decor where it looks kind of modern and stylish. But let's go in for the bed test and see how clean it is. There are a few hairs in there. I've already spotted a bit of a stain on the duvet. Check this out. And I've spotted some sort of red marks as well on the duvet. It kind of looks like you would think that it might be blood, but I don't think it is. It kind of just looks like felt tip pen. So I paid 59 pounds for this room do you think that's worth it or not? Comment below. And check this out. I think someone has left an open pack of tissues for me right in the corner there. I think it's probably the last person that stayed in the room. How nice of them. Right, so I'm out for dinner and I haven't actually spent that much money today. I still have 40 pounds and 60 pence left. Let's see if we can go somewhere nice. I fancy an Indian, so I'm gonna go in here. Rosika. So that was a pretty good meal in there. They do a deal where you can get a starter, a main and a side for $16.95. So that's what I went for. So to start, I went for the mixed grill, which contained a seat kebab, a lamb kebab and a chicken kebab. And that came with a sweet mango chutney, which was delicious. For main, I went for a lamb buna and a garlic naan bread. And I have to say it was really, really good. You could taste the spices in the curry and the garlic in the naan bread. The naan bread wasn't too thick, it was quite thin and crispy. So a pretty delicious curry. I got that with a blackcurrant cordial and it came to £17.95. Which means I have £22.65 left. Check it out, the time bridge lights up at night. The Millennium Bridge lights up too. I don't know why, but this tunnel bridge kind of reminds me of New York. Even though I've never been to New York. Okay, so I've made it back to my room and I think I'm just going to chill out here for the rest of the night. I'll let you know what my stay was like here tomorrow morning. I'll see you then. Good morning. So it's now the next day. And so what was my stay like at Sleepers Newcastle? I have to say it was pretty decent. Let's start off with the positives. The room looked nice. It was nice and stylish and modern in there. The bed was nice and comfy too. I got a TV in the room as well, which is not always a given. So moving on to the negatives. I don't think it was the cleanest room I've ever stayed in. And also, whenever someone, I think next door or either upstairs, flush the toilet, you can hear it really clearly. You can hear the water coming through the pipes. 
and it was really loud. So all in all, I would say a pretty good stay. £59 for the centre of Newcastle. It's not bad. Right, I still have £22.65 and pence left and it's time for breakfast. But I can't spend all of that because the activity that I'm doing today is going to cost a bit of money. Check it out, they do little scooters that you can rent out here. Shall I try one? I think I'm going to go in here. Key ingredient. So that was a pretty delicious breakfast in there. I went for the Eggs Benedict with Parma Ham. So it came on top of a toasted muffin, you had two poached eggs, the Parma Ham and some lovely Hollandaise sauce. And I got that with a cup of tea, all for £10.15. Which means I have £12.15 left. Let's go do my first activity for the day. It's a bit hilly here in Newcastle, especially when you're walking up from the river. People just leave these parts about anywhere. The Newcastle Cathedral. And I'm in. free to come in here so you can just wander about at your own leisure. Looks like it's just some sort of prayer room. I do quite like these central rooms in the cathedrals. They all seem to have them and you've got a space where you can sit down. There's a cafe in here. I don't think you can go up the tower in this one. There's a bishop making the peace sign. That was pretty cool in there. Now let's make our way over to the Newcastle Castle, which I do think costs to go in. So let's go see how much it is. It cost £9.25 for a ticket, so I bought one. Let's go explore the castle. So the castle is in two separate buildings. The one where you buy the ticket from is pretty much just one exhibition room but to get to the actual castle with the tower you have to walk across this bridge and it's here. It looks like you have to climb these steep stairs to get in. Let's do it. So I think I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up to the top. I think I found the toilet. So there's loads of these little tight small little staircases that you have to navigate around to get to places. It is a little bit like a maze in here. You get these little pathways and offshoots and little rooms that go off into nowhere. It's quite hard to find your way around. I've reached a bit of a crossroads. Do I go up these stairs or these stairs? I think I choose these ones. I think I've reached the Great Hall. So this is the well room, and this is the well that they used to use to get the water from. So I'm led to believe that this castle was used as a fortress and not just a house for the king to live in. And I think I found another toilet. This place is well facilitated. I think I'm reaching the top of the tower now. And I've made it to the top of the tower. You do get some pretty good views at the top of the tower. You've got the Time Bridge. You've got the other bridges, including the blue one, the train station, and the cathedral. I've just spotted, you can actually go up one of these turrets. I think you get the best view of Newcastle from up here. So that was a really, really cool experience in there. It's probably one of the most intact castles I've ever been to and you can really see that that's how it used to be hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So it's well worth the visit. Okay, so I'm now down to £3.25 and I want to go back and do something that I did yesterday that I didn't quite do properly. Just crossing the small red bridge now. The Millennium Bridge. I didn't get to do this properly yesterday, so I can today. So this bridge can actually pivot so this walkway goes up in the air. I'm not totally sure why that is, but it can do it. It is a little bit nerve wracking because it actually wobbles as people walk across and the wind blows. So where should I go for my next 24 hours and what should my budget be? Comment below. 
If you liked the video, click on the thumbs up icon below. Click on subscribe to come along for the next 24 hours. And I'll see you in the next video.